Welcome to Croatia for round 10 of the European Rally Championship. A mainstay of the ERC for several years, the Croatia Rally moves from June to late September to coincide with the meeting of the FIA's World Motorsport Council. Famous for its slippery asphalt and huge spectator numbers, the 2013 were in the picturesque holiday resort of Porridge. An exciting 14-stage rally with competitive distance of over 239 kilometers. Porich, the most uh, well, beautiful place you could imagine. 2,000 years old, set in a harbor protected by the sea and the small island of San Nicolas. Porich heritage can be seen in the historic town center, museums and galleries, many of them still in private homes. Rain on the first two stages of the rally. Andreas Anya out there and doing his stuff with the Subaru Impreza R4. Anya ran soft Yokohama tires on the front and led to stage four. Jan Kipetsky, a great name, a great driver. Hard compound Michelins for the first edges jumped ahead of Anya in drying conditions during the afternoon. Leading after leg one. Well, a good morning on soft tyres for Herman Gassner Jr. in his Mitsubishi Lancer Evo, Evo 10. Third after leg one, only 5.2 seconds behind Einja. Einja leading the production car cup, Gassner second. This is Bern Keiter. That's some scary moments. Peter Schoen calling the notes. Schoen will be the driver for leg two, sharing duties. Fourth after leg one, the Belgian duo. Germain Boniface, the Frenchman on board the Renault Megane N4, crashed on stage three in wet conditions. Boniface taken to hospital, fractured vertebra. I indeed was third in the production car standings. So, the graphics, and indeed the standings, I should say, Kopetsky. Close at hand, Anya and Gassner Jr. Just a minute adrift. The battle for the podium rages. This is leg two of the European Rally Championship Croatia. It's a dry morning but overcast, as you can see. A glorious part of the world to go rallying. Seven stages, two loops of three stages, ending with a super special. Longest stage, 29.88 kilometers, run twice. Yes, as are stages 10 and 13. So, heading for the first selection of three stages. Butanija, 14.97 kilometers, starting off at just after 10 in the morning local time. And then the first run through Bouzé, almost the same distance. Set off time, 10.30. Juraj Sabaj, fourth on the road, fifth in the standings before the stage. Drama for the local hero on stage eight. Ouch. Tricky section, following a crest, carrying too much speed. Crew okay, but with the car blocking the road. Stage neutralized for safety reasons. Quite a drop. We caught up with the boys. This was one, 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 one place. It, it is very fast, very fast curve on a little bit, on a little crest. And I just, I was just lift off for a little bit and I couldn't do the right one and I I was in the dish. It's a lot of lot of mud, but okay, this was good shock absorption, so the car is okay. Collected half the countryside. Peter Schoen, fifth on the road. Remember Schoen and, and Kaiser are uh, sharing driving and co-driving on this event. Schoen at the wheel on day two. See how the notes are read by Kaiser. Stage nine, he spun, lost time. Indeed, had a hairpin. Managed to finish fourth quickest. Running fourth overall.
Over oh, Gessner Jr., the German with the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 10, six on the road, fighting hard with Anya for second place. This time, eight minutes 31.1, third quickest on stage nine. Glorious onboard glass house view. Anya and his Subaru, seventh on the road. So at the end of stage nine, he couldn't have done any better. Driving wasn't perfect. Well, obviously he could then. Eight minutes 34.6, 2.4 seconds slower than Gassner Jr. Second in the standings, but Gassner is just 2.0 seconds behind him in that ranking. Jan Kopetsky starting eighth on the road. He said at the end of this one he had a feeling that uh, he had to slow down and to remember the stage. So it was tough to remember anything. Luckily, he's got pace notes. Slowing down, doesn't look like it. Fastest time, eight minutes 25.6. Strong lead now, a minute and one second ahead of Anya in the standings. Going from strength to strength, the strong man. More action from the European Rally Championship in Croatia to come. Leg two of the ERC Croatia Rally, now heading for the longest stage of the event. After refueling at the end of stage nine, crews getting ready for the long stage 10, Salteria, which is run twice. 29.88 kilometers in length, starting just after 10.35 local time. Clouds gathering and a real storm brewing down on the tarmac. Peter Schoen, 16 minutes, 59.7. So at the end of the stage, it was a good, quite fast. In fact, he said, I loved it. Great to see a man happy with his work. Schoen, quickest on the stage. Obviously the notes read quite well. Herman Gessner Jr. His time bumping over the 11 minute mark. Fourth quickest. Maximum attack. His target. Anya. Second place. It's about the biggest scheme of things out there. Gasner Jr. and Anya. Well, not quite taking pieces out of each other. Set too far apart for that, obviously. But these vehicles. Tough as old boots. And so are those within them. Great work. Andreas Anya, two seconds slower than Gassner. Stay second in the standings. But Gassner, remarkably, is now just 0 0.7 of a second behind. That battle for runners-up spot, provided Kopetsky doesn't make a mistake, absolutely raging between the two old marks. Well, Subaru and Mitsubishi have been such stalwarts of support for rallying over the years. Still very much competitive. And you said at the end of the stage, tyres just a little bit too soft, and we seem to be moving around a lot, you can see it. Jan Kopetsky moving only one way, and that seems to be further ahead of everybody. No hurry for the leader, he said. And indeed, he's back a bit, it seems. Third quickest, 10.4 seconds slower than Schoen. A strong lead, though. Still over a minute and five ahead of Anya in the standings. Mm. 
ninth on the road, Henk Latigan, the South African. Well, consistent on the rally so far. The South African driver, factory driver indeed for Volkswagen South Africa. 4.9 seconds slower than Schoen. Fifth overall, 32.2 behind Schoen in those standings. Barry White still singing. Kopetsky out in front. Anya and Gasta Jr. still locked horns in that battle for second. And so to the service park in Porich. All ahead of the last loop of three stages. Kopetsky still leading, but the fight is on for second, as you've seen. And for victory, the production car cup between Andres Einer and Herman Gastner Jr. are separated, as we said, by just 0 0.7 of a second. Nervous stuff. Well, it started yesterday when the roads dried up. Um, when dry, I can't take full advantage of the strong performance and handling of the Subaru in the twisty and narrow sections. Uh, today, with long straights, well, it's a little bit more difficult the other way. As Anya and Herman Gassner Jr. wondering what the weather will be for the last loop of stages. Rain or dry? Big question. Unfortunately, it looks like it's going to be raining in the last stages. It'll be interesting on those uh, these last three runs. We'll try to narrow the gap. Good lad. Anya leaves the service park with four softs and two medium Yokohama tyres, while Gaston Jr. chooses four mediums and one soft, sticking one in the boot. Anya wants rain. Gaston gambles on dry conditions. Oh, the drivers are heading for the last stages. We meet the FRA president, Jean Todd, here visiting the service park of the Croatia Rally in Porec. Mr. Todd says the future of the ERC is a bright one. Well, he's seen some very good rallying, has he not? Nowadays, there are some very beautiful rallies as part of the European Rally Championship, uh, like the Tour of Corsica, a great history, and I know there'll be a very ambitious calendar for the ERC in 2014. And there is, of course, the new R5 category with a lot of interest from the manufacturers. It makes rallies even more affordable. Où là aussi, il y a beaucoup de constructeurs qui s'y intéressent et ce qui rend les rallyes encore plus abordables. Heading for the last loop, the weather is changing. There's rain in the air. Three stages in the second loop. Second run of the morning stages, including that long 29.88 kilometer test. Boutanija. First up, followed by Bouze. Second run through both. Herman Gessner Jr., bad luck for him. Rain hitting the stages once more. He didn't want it. Not much grip with his medium compound tyres. Loses 23 seconds to Anya in that battle for second place overall. And indeed, that battle for victory in the production cup. A little bit of moisture on soft Yokohamas. Once again, good tyre choice. Andreas Einer now safely in second overall uh, with a good lead in that production cup. But still, the stage, almost 30 kilometres. It's long. Things could change. Third fastest on stage 11, second fastest on stage 12, still holding fourth overall. Now 45.2 seconds behind the third place Gasner, Peter Schoen, showing him how to do it. Podium still possible for the Belgian pair. Schoen and Kezia, both drivers, don't forget, subbing on duties, changing roles to be driver and co-driver. Another second fastest time for Kopetsky, winning stages 11 and 12. Now leading by a great margin. So two fastest stage times, I should say, on those stages. A minute and 
his lead over Anya Kopetsky in his pond. And what about Henk Ladigan, the South African? Difficult stage 11 for him. Going straight on in the right-hander, kissing a tree. Hello and goodbye. Did continue though, still holds fifth overall, such was his cushion. Probably needs a cushion. Alex Hammer, another great performance by the Slovenian 40-year-old champion. Break starting to fade at the end of stages 11 and 12. Still sixth overall and a strong leader in that two-wheel drive cup. He's had some very good runs here, has Humar. So, how do they shake out after stage 12? Kopetsky cruising, Anya solid, Gastner Jr. licking wounds, Schoen and Cassia waiting to pounce. The Croatia rally is not finished yet. With changing weather conditions, anything can happen. And so to the climax of the ERC Croatia rally. After the refuel in Bruze, crews are now getting ready for the second pass of the longest stage of day two. Solterra, stage 13. Twenty past two in the afternoon, local time, 29.88 kilometers ahead. Henk Ladigan, 16 seconds slower than his first pass, but still the third quickest time. 0.5 seconds slower than Gasner, fifth overall. He's learned a lot on both wet and dry tarmac surfaces this weekend. And for that, the South African is grateful. It's been a really busy weekend. I've learned so much um, from start to finish, uh, learning the wet and the dry conditions and the slippery. And no, we've, we've learned a lot. And that's what we came here for, just to, to drive, get the mileage and so far, we, we're nearly at the end. That was our goal, so I'm pretty happy. Usually a gravel driver, of course. Peter Schoen, 22 seconds slower than on his first pass, had to slow down, losing his brakes. Getting spongy, fourth quickest, fourth overall. Been a great run by these boys from Belgium. We put the soft tires on for the first two stages and uh, this one was almost completely dry so uh, at the end I was driving like on gravel, I lost the brake so I had to slow down but uh, okay I think it's a good time after all. Got to be brave here, Herman Gessner Jr, German in the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 10, 17.20.4 his time, that's too much time in the two previous stages. Now racing for third, goes second quickest here. They lost too much time, too much time in the first two stages. This one was quite okay, but we did not use the very hard in the front because we want to save some tires. Anyway, it was not too bad. Well, the clouds still haven't fully burst, but it's damp out there, particularly under the trees, as you can see. Andreas Einje, 17 seconds slower than his first run through here. Caution? Yeah, taking it easy. He knows Gessner should now be a threat, or should not, I should say, be a threat anymore. And with just one stage to go before taking his best result in the ERC this year, he's not going to throw it away. Should be okay, should be okay. I take it very easy, especially in the beginning. There are many deep, deep cuts with big stones out on the road. So I try to get no puncture, try to save, be safe and save the tires. And because we have to keep the soft tires on the car, 
for the long one as well because it was no time to change. So quite okay, good tactic. Trouble is if you keep something in reserve as a top-end rally driver, sometimes you can upset your rhythm. Jan Kopetsky is not a man who eases off easily. With a strong lead, cruising to his sixth victory this year, just one short super special stage to go before celebration time. And guess what? Despite his cushion, fastest again. See what I mean? 12 seconds quicker than his first run through here. Well, he clearly had mapped it a little bit in his mind. What is the secret of such a superior display? It's a big question. I don't know, maybe we, we found some shortcut on the stage. I'm really, we will see. <laughs> Let's have a look at how the two-wheel drive cup and the ladies' trophies shaped up. Two-wheel drive and Alex Humar, Slovenian champion, winning that division. An impressive seventh overall in his Renault Clio R3. Zoltan Bessignier in the Honda Civic Type R, R3, second in the two-wheel drive cup. Strengthens his lead, though, in the two-wheel drive cup standings. And Cornel Lukas, spare thought for him in the Citroën C2. The Hungarian, only seventh in the two-wheel drive cup, had a penalty after retiring on stage one. And this is how the two-wheel drive driver's standings shape up. Bessonier totally dominant. Molly Taylor in the ladies' trophy. Australian in the uh, Citroen DS3 R3T. Second in the ladies' competition, but secures the 2013 ladies' trophy. First ever ERC ladies' champion. Asas Zupank, the ladies' competition, taking that here in Croatia on board the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 9. Molly Taylor, happy. Heading now for the last stage of the Croatia Rally. Lots of spectators gathered in Porec for the Super Special. Just 1.7 kilometers, but, well, as you saw, at the top of this rally, things can go wrong here. Herman Gerstner Jr., fifth quickest on the last stage, third overall, his first podium in the ERC, second in the Production Cup category. Andreas Ayer, fourth quickest, second overall, best result in the ERC, wins the Production Cup category. And here is your production car cup driver standings. Andres Einje with a clear lead over Orsak. Lots of action for the spectators on the last stage. Peter Schoen, the quickest. Jan Kabetsky, heading for his sixth win of the season, took the lead in Croatia after stage four. The 2013 European Rally Champion. We won, uh, I think, quite many rallies this year. Six rallies, okay, one time second place, uh, one time third place, so it was really amazing. Thanks a lot uh, to our team, thanks a lot to our boss, to Mr. Rabane, because uh, he was supporting us, uh, you know, uh, as much as uh, it was possible. Thanks uh, every single member of our team. Thanks indeed, and once again, Completely dominant performance by Kapetsky. Everyone else battling for the other places. Anya, dearest man to him. Sixth victory for 2013 for Jan Kapetsky. Seventh victory for Skoda Motorsport. Happy crew.
I've even got him an extra large t-shirt to go over his overalls. Kopetsky then, 287 points. Brian Bouffier, the Frenchman and the Peugeot 207 nearest to him. And uh, Craig Vrien, the Irishman, close at hand on that championship podium. And so the Colin McRae flat out trophy awarded to the driver who best displays the attributes of the late great man. Awarded to Andres Aigne. Courageous driving from the very start, particularly in the wet. Well, what a year it has been for the 2013 European champion, Jan Kopetsky. He just can't be anything other than great, it seems. That's it from Croatia. Next round, a real rally classic. San Remo. Oh, yes. The 11th to the 12th of October. Hope you can join us for that. As you know, it'll be special. I'm Carlton Kirby. We'll see you later.